Howdy! In this lesson, we're going to be deriving the moments about a symmetric airfoil using thin airfoil theory. So once again, we'll have some symmetric airfoil, which means that our cord line is equal to our camber line. And we're representing this as a vortex sheet, which means there's some distributed vorticity along the cord line. Now, each element of this vorticity is once again going to be causing some differential lift, which is going to be equal to uh, rho v infinity times r gamma times this dc. Now, since we're interested in moment, we can calculate the moment about some point x. So this is our moment about x. And this will be our distance x. This will be our distance c. So the portion of the moment caused by this differential lift, so this is a dm about x, is going to be a negative, noticing the, uh, that this is in the opposite direction of our moment. Negative c minus x, this is our moment arm, times dl prime. So if we're interested specifically about the leading edge, then our x term is going to be 0, which means that this will simply be negative c times dl, or c rho v infinity gamma d c. So now we'd like to go ahead and calculate all of this, so we'll integrate over the chord. So our complete moment is equal to the negative, and we'll go ahead and bring out some of these constants. So we have a rho v infinity, integral from 0 to c of xi gamma d xi. Now remember that we have gamma of theta defined. And this is simply 2 alpha v infinity times 1 plus cosine of theta over sine of theta. So in order to plug this in, we need to transform once again to units of theta. So our moments about the leading edge is going to be negative rho v infinity integral from 0 to pi. And this c term is going to be a c over 2 1 minus cosine of theta, null of gamma of theta, and then our dc is going to be another c over 2 times sine theta d theta. So now we can go ahead and plug our gamma in, which means that this becomes, uh, let's go ahead and bring all this out. So this becomes a negative 2 alpha rho v infinity squared. And then we can take both of these terms out to so get c squared over 4. And now we'll integrate from 0 to pi of 1 minus cosine theta. And then the sine terms, once again, will cancel. And so this becomes a 1 plus cosine theta, d theta. So simplifying this further, we can cancel out one of these halves to make this alpha. This becomes a rho v infinity squared over 2 times c squared. And then our integral, we can simplify to 1 minus cosine squared theta d theta. Now, the integral from 0 to pi of 1 is equal to pi. And the integral from 0 to pi of cosine squared theta is equal to negative pi over 2. Or rather, negative that is equal to negative pi over 2. So this entire thing becomes a pi over 2. So we can say that this is negative alpha, and we'll just say q infinity, c squared pi over 2. So if we want to look at the moment coefficient about the leading edge, this is going to be the moment about the leading edge divided by q infinity times c times our surface area. 
and our surface is simply c times 1. So this becomes, <clears throat> we get rid of the q and both of our c's to become a negative alpha pi over 2. And this, in turn, is equal to our CL over 4, or rather, negative CL over 4. So <clears throat> you may recall that as you move the distance from the moment to the point of the lift, this the, the term varies based on uh, based on the distance times the lift. So what I'm saying is, if we want to find CM of x, this becomes negative CL over 4 times, again, we'll have our, or sorry, plus, we'll have our CL and then we'll have our x over c. So specifically, the, the, the thing we're interested in is the moment about the quarter chord is therefore going to be equal to 0. Since substituting in c over 4 here gets 1 over 4, these cancel and we end up with zero.